Welcome to the Heat Pump Water Heater Workshop, everybody, brought to you by Actera. This is a series that we have as part of our Green at Home series. And we're going to save all the questions till the end. You guys are welcome to type in the chat your questions, and we'll address them at the end. Next slide, Judd. So, thanks to our sponsor, Peninsula Clean Energy. They're going to talk as well. We have a guest speaker, Peter Levitt. He'll speak after his suds a little bit more about their programming relating to heat pump water heaters. So our first guest speaker, his name is Sitanchu Jane. He's a city, city of uh, Santa Clara council member, and he was also a former Actera board member. All right. Next uh, slide. Thank oh, okay. Just one more guest speaker. We have Peter Levitt. He's associate manager. He works on distributed energy resources at Peninsula Clean Energy. And go ahead and take it away, Suds. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, I installed a heat pump water heater in my own house by myself. Um, so I'm intimately uh, aware of all of the issues with heat pump water heaters. I'm a huge proponent of heat pump water heaters. Um, for those of you who may have heard our lecture, uh, the Code Red for Humanity with Saul Griffith, uh, who recently wrote a book called Electrify. It's imperative that people uh, eliminate their fossil fuel burning appliances everywhere in their homes and in their lives like cars. And uh, because if you were to buy a new heat pump water heater, you're basically committing, if you were to buy a new gas water heater, you're basically committing to burning fossil fuels for at least 10 years. So um, that's that's our message. So if you look at, um, sorry, I have this uh, loading, there we go, okay. Um, so if you look at energy use in a home, uh, electricity use or energy use in a home, you'll see U US wide, 41% um, is consumed for space heating and uh, about 18% is for water heating. But California, because we have a mild climate, we don't use as much for space heating. So actually 25% of our energy is used for water heating. So that's a big area that we can attack to reduce your carbon footprint. So there are multiple types of water heaters. Um, this is a heat pump water heater. You can see that it has vents here for air because what it's doing is it's taking room air and it's sucking the heat out of it, putting that heat into the water, and it's ejecting cold air out the other side. Um, the gas water heater, you can see here, it has a flue at the top. So uh, you actually burn gas to heat the water. And then you have an electric water heater, which just has a resistance coil inside the water heater. So you put electricity in to heat the water, like an immersion coil. Um, then there's a third type of, or fourth type of water heater, which is a tankless water heater. So when you have a big tank, um, that tank is full of hot water and it's always radiating some heat to the outside. So the tank typically would lose 15 to 20% of the energy, the heat to the outside environment. So uh, you can avoid that by not having a tank. So the tankless water heaters um, have enough uh, heating capacity, whether it's uh, gas or electric, to heat the water instantly as it flows through. So um, they were considered to be more efficient than the tanked water heaters. And uh, they were, but uh, they turn on and off a lot. So depending on the water use, and every time they turn on and off, you get a little bit of methane leakage. So, um, but you can get them, if you get the, the gas ones, they're 67 to 95% efficient, extracting heat from the burning gas. And a, uh, an electric one would be about 99% efficient at extracting energy from the electricity. But to make that electricity, there's a 50% loss in the power plant that makes the electricity. So those net out at about 50% efficient. 
So um, why would you switch to a heat pump water heater? If you just look at the methane use in your house, the water heater is the bulk of your methane use in your house. Um, then there's space heating and then there's cooking and drying. So um, now a heat pump is actually like 300% efficient, which is, just seems impossible from a thermodynamics standpoint. But what, like I said, what you're doing is you're just using an air conditioner to pull heat out of outside air. So, um, uh, and you get improve your indoor air quality, just like if you replace your gas stove with an induction stove, you're not burning uh, something that's creating pollution, nitrous oxides and so on. So it's just a healthier environment. Um, and you actually would save money. So depending on the time of use that you use your electricity, so you can program some of the newer heat pump water heaters to use to only heat water at very low cost times. And uh, I'll explain a little bit of that more. Then you can get these tax credits to, to help reduce the cost of uh, purchasing and installing these. So this is how a heat pump works. Um, if you compress a gas, you heat it up. So if you have a blower on that, you 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 can pull the heat off. This this gas is getting really hot, but you you pull the heat off of that, and so then you have sort of room temperature gas going into this. When it goes through an expansion valve, it cools, and uh, and so we use this cool gas for refrigeration or air conditioning. So when you run a fan over this, you get cool air out. We're reversing this and we wanna use this side. So we're taking outside air, running it over this, this cool thing, we're heating up this thing, then when you compress it, you heat it up even more and you pull that heat off with this fan and that's what's heating the water. So I hope that makes sense. Um, so these are the parts of a, uh, of a uh, um, heat pump water heater. You have that compressor, and then you have the evaporator, which is where the gas expands inside the top of this. Then you have these fans, and then you take the the hot refrigerant and you run it down through the water, and that heats the water. So this is my installation. You can see my uh, messy wiring closet, but um, here's the AC disconnect, which you're required to have, and then down here is a condensate pump. So when you actually are cooling the outside air, you're actually uh, pulling, con you're condensing water out of that. So you have to get rid of that. So you have a condensate pump. Um, so my ream is actually 375% efficient. So that means for every kilowatt hour of electricity that I put in here, I actually get almost four kilowatt hours of heating into the water. So um, uh, there, th there is a slight problem with some of these in that there, there's an amb ambient operating range. So if you put this in your garage, it may not, uh, this particular model won't cool, won't heat water if it's below 37 degrees in your garage or wherever you have it. And to compensate for that, they actually have an electric resistance in here for those few days when you need to when you need to uh, heat water when it's too cold around there. They have other models which will actually operate to well below freezing. So um, they have heat heat pump um, air conditioning systems that heat and cool that operate on the East Coast in Virginia and uh, the Carolinas that operate down to the 20s. And so um, so this is what it looks like. Um, and then if you look at just regular uh, water heaters, you can look at the uh, efficiency of these water heaters, the energy factor. And so you can see that um, uh, there's different efficiencies. Tankless have more efficiency than the tanked ones. 
and then you have a cost of operation per year. And then they, they all expect um, to last about 13 years. So what we're recommending is that if you know that your water heater is approaching that 13 year mark, it's probably gonna start leaking and you might get a flood in your house. So it's probably a good idea to think about replacing it before you have that water leak. And, uh, and in fact, that's exactly what happened to, to me. I was about the 13 year mark. I ordered my heat pump water heater. And while I was getting all the parts together, my uh, gas water heater gave up the ghost and flooded my basement to about an inch of water. While I was ready to replace it, maybe it was mad at me or something, I don't know. Uh, so uh, fortunately I didn't have any water damage due to that because I caught it in time. But if you're on vacation, that would be a problem. So um, now if you compare heat pump water heaters, uh, here they use about a factor of two efficiency and the, the efficiency matters based on the out, outside air temperature. So if you're working in a hot environment, this number would go up. If you're working in a cold environment, it's harder to pull the heat out of cold air. So um, the tankless ones are 99% efficient. The other ones are um, uh, for, electric, for electric water heaters, um, they're 90% efficient. But here they're 200% efficient. So you actually save um, energy. So you, they're more expensive, the installed cost um, of the water heater itself is about $1,500 versus about $600, six to $700 for a uh, just a standard uh, um, resistive water heater. But um, they pay back um, because you have this high efficiency. So, um, so now if you're going to replace a gas water heater with a heat pump water heater, um, uh, it used to be that you had to install 240 volt electricity, um, which means installing a separate breaker and running the wiring. Uh, but now they're just starting to make these uh, regular 120 volt heat pump water heaters. And I'll talk a little bit about them later, but then you don't have to have this high power circuit. Um, uh, and then it used to be that you had to have two contractors. You needed a plumber and an electrician. Uh, HVAC contractors actually have both licenses. They can do the plumbing and the electrical work. But there was just a new ruling from the state contractors license board, which allows plumbers to do the wiring that's just incidental to installing uh, the, the water heater. So they're actually, they're not allowed to install a new outlet somewhere or do other electrical work, but to do incidental work to installing a heat pump water heater, uh, plumbers are allowed to do that now. Um, so if you were to take a heat pump water heater and put it in a small closet, what you're doing is you're cooling that, you're sucking heat out of the ambient air. So you can imagine, the more heat you're sucking, that room's gonna get colder and colder, and the heat pump is gonna to have to work harder and harder to extract heat from that. So they have minimum room sizes that you're gonna put these in. Um, mine is actually in my basement. So um, I actually get free air conditioning because it's taking the ambient uh, air from the room and it's cooling that, so I get air conditioning. And uh, you can set it up so that in the winter time, that cold air gets vented outside. So you're not cooling your house in the winter time, but in the summertime, you get free air conditioning. Then, as I said, you have to run that condensate line because you're taking this ambient air, you're cooling it down. Of course, moisture will rain out of that, will condense, condense out of that. And then there's an air filter that, because you're running this air over a um, over a um, heat heat exchanger, so um, you uh, you need to clean the air filter, but maybe like once a year. And they're slightly louder than a gas water heater, 
Uh, my ream, it runs at uh, about 49 dB. Some other models are up at 51 decibels or uh, 55 decibels. So 50 dB is equivalent to moderate rainfall or a conversation in a home. So like as I'm sitting here, I can hear my heat pump water heater go off, but it doesn't disturb this talk that I'm giving or any conversations that I have. Um, so one of the things that you know we're we're challenged with now in California is that um, it used to be our um, load from fossil fuel plants was kind of constant. Um, it was kind of this blue line here, and it would go up a little bit in the evenings. But as we've added more and more solar to the grid, we don't need those those gas-powered power plants. And in fact, now it turns out that in the middle of the day, uh, in the spring, electricity prices can actually be negative because there's so much generation from solar that 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 they're kind of dumping the electricity. So imagine if you programmed your water heater, and I've done this for mine, to actually heat water at this time when electricity is extremely cheap. And then you have this big tank that's got full of hot water, and then, and I actually overheat it. I heat it to like 126 degrees. So then in the evenings, I have plenty of hot water. And uh, I'll describe how that works um, for other ones. But this is called the duck curve. You can see over time, the belly of the duck has gotten deeper and deeper as we've added more solar. So at this time, gas-fired power plants around the state start turning off. But then around this time, when people start going home, we, we run out of uh, solar, and then we have to turn on all these gas-fired peaker plants, which is very polluting. Um, so here's energy pricing. So this follows the belly of the duck. So you can see that uh, if you had a heat pump water heater, you'd want to heat water here from like two to four in the morning. And then you want to heat water from say 10 to 4 p.m. in the afternoon. And so, um, and they have time of use rates. So that allows you to heat water very um, cost effectively. So now um, there are these 120 volt heat pump water heaters that are almost here. They'll be available in a few months, but different manufacturers are making these. So like Ream, they're gonna have a 240 volt and a 120 volt. Now the 120 volt doesn't have those resistive heating. So if you had this in a really cold garage, it may not work unless they've designed it to operate for colder temperatures, like down to 20 degrees. So you'd have to be careful about using one of these 120 volt heat pump water heaters in a garage when it's gonna get down really cold because you don't have that resistive heating backup. Um, but uh, so then they have this other thing. There's a new standard called grid connectivity, the CTA 2045. And that allows the power company, if you allow them to, to basically manage your heat pump water heater so that, um, they can turn it on and off based on when the grid is running out of electricity or energy prices are really, really um, low. So it turns out that about 50% of gas existing gas water heaters already have an electric line running to their igniter switch. So uh, to run one of these 120 volt heat pump water heaters uh, won't require a lot of um, electrical work you already have the line running there. So um, so with the heat pump, the 120 volt heat pump water heaters, um, they uh, have a 120 volt shared or dedicated plug-in. So it's just a regular plug. And then they, they're capable of higher storage water temperatures. And then this is critical. They have this electronic mixing valve. Because if you were to say heat your water to 130 degrees uh, at those really inexpensive times, that's scalding temperatures. So this mixing valve prevents scalding temperature water from getting out. So it'll actually mix the cold and the hot as you're using the water. 
so you can never get scalding. So, um, so, you, so you can take advantage of superheating your water and then not have a scalding rinse. So they have different tank sizes. And as I said, that almost all of these now have this CTA uh, port. My ream allows me to program the times and I can actually do it from the internet as well. Um, so, uh, so this just describes again that uh, CTA module. And so again, you, you, the power company might wanna turn on your water heater at these really inexpensive times. Um, so, uh, so this is, uh, as, uh, as I explained, you, you really don't want your water heater to start leaking when you're not there or, uh, so you wanna replace it before it starts leaking. And they estimate nationwide two and a half million water heaters will fail this year. And so uh, you don't wanna get stuck without hot water. And so, um, um, so what the, the DOE, Department of Energy, is actually saying that if yours is one of the 27 million households with a storage water heater that's more than 10 years old, replace it. Uh, so that's our recommendation. And then um, to help you with the higher cost of the heat pump water heater and the installation, uh, all kinds of organizations have offered rebates. And Peter's gonna be talking about what Peninsula Clean Energy has later. Um, Bayren, which is um, a, a program from PG&E, they have their own programs to offer uh, um, rebates. Electrify Marin, City of Alameda has, um, has incentives. Electrify San Jose will actually offer up to 6,000 for panel upgrades and uh, um, water heaters. So some t the issue with the panel upgrade is if you're gonna install one of the 240 volt, 30 amp water heaters, you may not have enough capacity in your panel to, uh, to run that water heater. So in which case you'd wanna upgrade from, some people have 60 amp panels, some people have 100 amp panels. I have a 200 amp panel. So a 200 amp panel will allow me to use almost 50 kilowatts of power which is an, a tremendous amount of power. Um, but if you had one of the smaller panels and you're trying to electrify your home, it's probably recommended that you upgrade to a 200 amp panel. Um, Actera has done talks about um, uh, 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 home diets, electric diets, where you can actually share your dryer with your electric car and uh, avoid having to do panel upgrades. There are these devices called like dryer buddies that allow you to share devices. Uh, the electric car chargers, um, like the one I have, if I install two of them, they'll just share power between, so I wouldn't have to have two set circuits for the cars. Um, so uh, um, Silicon Valley Clean Energy, pretty much everyone has these, uh, water heater rebates. So I'd encourage you to take advantage of those. Um, and then there's lists of contractors. So Bayren, which is that um, sort of a program out of PG&E, they have a find a contractor link. And then um, the Peninsula Clean Energy website also has the Bayren list of contractors. And then uh, cost of recent installations. Um, I'll actually show this this thing. This is from PCE. Uh, let me pull this over here. This sh shows sort of the app. They've been tracking uh, recent installations. I don't know if you guys can see this. Um, recent installations in, on the peninsula. And they can see on June 8th of last year, there was an installation at 80 gallon heat pump water heater. It was a RUD. And uh, it costs sixty six hundred dollars to install, and so um, the average cost of installation, and these are before rebates. So the average cost is sixty eight hundred dollars, but then you get these rebates on top of that. So it, it um, makes it much more.
palatable for people to do the upgrades. Um, and so there are various barriers to adoption um, uh, and advantages. You know, the duck curve, of course, uh, if you're using electricity at that um, very expensive times, then you could get hit by the neck of the duck. Uh, there's the noise issue, which some people complain about. I don't think it's a big problem. Um, and then if you're gonna use uh, the amount of heating that happens in a heat pump water heater is, so I've turned off the resistance heat on my heat pump water heater because I don't want to use that electricity. I want to use the, the you know, 3x efficient, the 300% efficiency of heating water. So, um, but if, but if you just let the heat pump heat your water, it does take longer than a gas water heater. Um, but again, if you have a problem of running out of, of hot water, you can superheat your water and rely on the mixing valve. And that'll give you basically the effect of having a bigger tank. So, um, and then some people have an issue of where to put that cold air. So, um, if you, depending on where you are, that the cold air that comes out of the heat pump water heater, um, you don't necessarily want to cool your house or a room with that. Uh, and then uh, the, uh, the other thing is that um, contractors have, not all contractors know how to install heat pump water heaters. So um, uh, w there are incentives to train contractors. So hopefully when we have more contractors doing this and they have more experience, it'll just be an easier and cheaper install. Um, so, uh, when you're selecting your heat pump water, you have to figure out where you can put it. You know, most people will just put it in the garage. Um, and then you want to figure out what size you think you need. And then you hire a professional or, you, I mean, I did it myself. You, you should get a permit. It turns out probably only about a third of people that get heat pump, that get any water heater installed have permits for them. But you should get a permit. Um, and uh, then other ways that you can reduce your bill is, of course, just saving water. We're in a massive drought right now. So install low flow shower heads and faucets. Um, uh, again, there's this trade off where if you have the water heater too hot, you're, you are going to lose more heat to radiating to the room. But if you're running out of hot water, it's probably worthwhile to crank up the temperature. Or again, if you're trying to play that game with the electricity prices based on the duck curve, then you can superheat your water. Um, and uh, so that's pretty much it. I'm gonna hand it over to Peter. Thank you. Uh, do we want to pause and field questions from the chat? There's quite a few or, um, should we uh, finalize the presentation and then address the questions? I think we can address the questions at the end um, once you're done presenting. So, so okay. you can Peter, stop sharing your Peter, screen. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna stop sharing, exactly. Peter, you can go ahead and share your screen. Great. All right. Let's see here. All right. So. Um, Hello everyone. Thanks for taking some time out of your evening to um, come and come to this presentation. My name is Peter Levitt, and I'm with Peninsula Queen Energy. I'm going to give an overview of our organization and then jump into our building electrification efforts, um, specifically our heat pump water heater program. Um, for those not familiar with Peninsula Queen Energy, we were launched in 2016 with the with the aim of building a sustainable world with clean energy and decarbonization for all of our customers. Um, and our, we save our customers uh, an estimated $18 million every year um, for, from the energy savings we provide. We also uh, utilize capital to invest into programs to further decarbonize 
in the building sector, transportation sector, and we also help drive backup power through energy resiliency. Some of the charts here are going to be somewhat redundant um, to what you've already seen tonight, but um, in, in the building sector, there is a, a ton of methane leakage through natural or fossil gas. Um, uh, and that is primarily from leaks at the distribution main, as well as at the meter itself, um, and even some within the home directly. Methane emissions are um, significantly more potent of a greenhouse gas than carbon emissions. And so that's why you see that um, in building, building uh, emissions account for quite a lot of in-county emissions, um, it, uh, according to our 2021 calculation. So you can see that um, over a third of emissions in our county right now come from um, methane in buildings. And then another significant portion is transportation. And then there's a, a host of smaller sources. Um, since, we've de since we've decarbonized the electricity se sector, largely that only accounts for a small bit. Um, so we're you know motivating customers to get off gas and get the low carbon electricity in their home um, a, as a replacement. And uh, water specifically is a major source of the methane emissions in the home and in the distribution uh, line. Uh, water heating uses more gas actually than space heating in California. And especially in the Bay Area, this is even more pronounced. Um, this is just a statewide uh, image, but this is uh, it's more extreme in the Bay Area and specifically San Mateo County. So this is the basis for why we've chosen to pursue hot water, uh, heap up water heaters as one of the primary solutions early on in the, our customers building electrification journey. We uh, have launched a heat pump water heater program aiming to make heat pump water installa installations more economically attractive to customers. And so if you install a heat pump water heater today, you can receive up to $2,000 in rebates. Um, the baseline rebate is $1,000, and then there's an additional thousand for if, if you're a low-income customer on CARE or FIRA. Um, we also recognize that, uh, as was alluded to previously, some heat pump water heaters can trigger the need for an electrical panel upgrade. We see that on about one quarter uh, of the projects that happen. Um, so we are also incentivizing customers to upgrade their electrical panel to make room for that um, with a $750 to a $1,500 rebate. All of our program is layered onto Bayren. So, um, Customers whose contractors apply for rebates through Bayren would also be automatically applying for rebates with Peninsula Clean Energy. On top of Bayren, there's also incentives available through the newly launched tech program and for customers in Redwood City. And you can see a, a breakdown of incentives at uh, our website right here. The, the tech program, it's worth noting, does not uh, at, you can get up to a certain amount. Um, right now in San Mateo, it's $3,800 um, for a heat pump water heater. And then if you're getting money from PCE or Bayren, that amount is reduced by uh, the same incentive from PCE or Bayren. So I want to uh, pause here and you know begin to solicit some of the good questions you folks are starting to pose in the chat and otherwise, um, and you know we're we're here all in the name of building electrification and decarbonization. So we want to be supportive and and helpful here um, and excited to continue this conversation. Thank you, Peter. You can go to the previous slide, uh, or I'll start sharing. It's okay. Okay, you're gonna share. share my screen. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a uh, another workshop coming up. We're talking about solar rooftops from our Green at Home workshop series. Um, this is where we're going to talk more about solar rooftops and the battery associated with that. 
Um, we have a guest speaker, Barry Simmon, and we're also going to have another Peninsula Clean Energy representative um, guest speak at this event as well. And then some other upcoming events from Actera. We have cooking classes, and if you want to test ride an e-bike, uh, April 23rd. Um, we have electric vehicle charging workshops, um, all that good stuff. So you can go to Actera's website on the events tab to learn all about that. But now we can get into the questions that were in the chat. Um, Sud, if you want to start from the the questions that we got early on in the chat, start answering that. I think you're muted, Sud. Okay, so I'll just start from the top. I can't, I read through all of these and I can't answer all of them. It's all right. I, just because yeah. I don't know, but um, there are systems that actually uh, will combine your space heating with your water heating so in one system. And I imagine they use a tank uh, to do the space heating from the water. Um, I don't have any experience with those, but I know that the whole of Stanford, they do this. So what they do is they have a, a, a big uh, heat pump that, and they have these three huge tanks, I think one of cold water and two of hot water, that they, um, they just pump heat from one to the other. And then they circulate that through like a radiant uh, heating system and cooling system throughout the campus. Um, so that's how they're actually heating and cooling their entire campus with a heat pump system. Um, the next question was, what's the noise of a gas water heater? I don't actually know. I tried a Google search and I couldn't find find that. Um, so when you do have a small room, you can put the heat pump in the small room. In fact, I have it in my wiring closet. And then I just duct, uh, and you can get these duct kits that come with your water heater that will allow you to duct it uh, outside. There are limits to how far you can duct it, and there's a calculation in the installation manual for what you could do that, uh, for how far you can go. Um, I don't know the recovery capacity in BTU per hour. Um, I think the specs on these things, let me see if I can find this. Oh, you'll have to go up to the ream. If you go up to slide 12, or if you want me to share, Let's see, what am I doing? Let me try to share again, if I can find it. Go to the ream slide. I am lost now. Here we go. Can I share? Here we go. All right. So for the ream here, they don't actually talk about um, I'll have to look it up and get back to you. Um, but uh, there, I mean, with the electric resistance, they will do 30 amps at 240 volts. So that's like six and a half kilowatts. So we can convert that to be to use. Um, then the circuit that runs as an igniter, uh, it's, it should be a 15 amp circuit. The, the 120 volt uh, heat pump water heaters will run on a 15 amp circuit. I don't think anyone runs anything less than a 15 amp circuit, but if you have a lot of other things on that igniter, then you'd have to run a, a dedicated line or split up, split up your line. But your wiring should be, even if it runs an igniter, it should be capable of running a heat pump water heater if there's nothing else on there. Um, if you put the heat pump water heater in a closet in the garage, 
you could duct uh, warm air from the house into the heat pump, um, but then you'd have to be careful because you're creating negative air pressure in your house, which um, uh, I think sometimes will suck exhaust gases from say your your stove or your furnace into the house. So you have to be careful about creating negative air pressures in your house, um, but it's a possibility. Um, I think the newer heat pumps, let's see. Um, I'll actually go to this one here. Where's the slide? Uh, here. Yeah, so I think there was a question about the higher storage temperatures. So this slide talks about, this is from um, a slide I picked up. They talk about higher storage water temperatures. So I imagine that they have somehow accounted for the expansion of the water for the hotter temperatures and whether it would um, destroy the tank life. Um, here, I had a slide on the tank life. Uh, here, someone had a, someone had a, um, um, a question about tank life. So for a standard electric water heater, it's like 13 years. And for a heat pump water heater, it's 10 years is what's listed. And then uh, for gas water heaters, typically they're 13 years as well. So um, tanklesses are more, they're 20 years. So, um, uh, so I think some people are saying with recirc pumps, I imagine it's the same thing. If you're trying to save water, water, uh, you can use a recirc pump. I'd recommend that you put it on a timer and that you have insulated recirc lines. Otherwise, you've just created a huge radiator in your house that you're heating your whole house with uh, this hot water. So um, it's a trade-off of saving water versus energy. Um, so. Uh, Uh, so I think the question was when to replace it. And the DOE says replace at burnout. So um, the problem is that, you know, if your water heater fails, then you've got to go find a contractor to do the work and you've got to get the water heater. So you could be out of water hot water for maybe a week, depending on, you know, how hard it is to get. There's huge supply chain issues these days. I don't know if it applies to water heaters, but um, so I guess I would recommend is that as you're approaching that 13 years, if you're at 13 years, I just replace it now and not take the chance. If you're, you know, at say 12 years, I don't know. Depends on what, how much of a gambler you are, I guess, a risk taker you are. Um, and uh, then, yeah, so to reduce costs, one of the things that I had noticed was that if the contractor orders your water heater, sometimes they they add the price to the water heater. Like I've seen, uh, a quote once where a $1,400 water heater was $3,000. So, uh, and I've heard that what you can do is you can just buy the water heater yourself, have it sitting there in your garage, and then have the contractor install what you've already bought. And you can save money that way. Um, so solar thermal in front of the heat pump water heater. Uh, solar thermal is a mess. I pretty much don't recommend solar thermal anywhere that uh, that there's a possibility of freezing uh, because you either have to have a drain back system, which is complicated, or you have to have a glycol system. And if you have a glycol system, you have a have a double a double wall heat exchanger, which adds to the price. And with all the plumbing of a um, 
a solar thermal system in California, I would never do it. Um, we looked at one 20 years ago, but now solar PV is so cheap, I'd take that roof space, create solar electricity, and then run your heat pump water heater on that. So I don't recommend adding solar thermal um, in California because we have freezing conditions. If you are in Puerto Rico, absolutely, solar thermal is great. Um, Let's see, uh, heat pumps for existing water heater tanks. There is, I think there is somebody who makes a bolt-on where you could actually bolt it onto your existing uh, water heater because you have a tank, you have ports. So you could do it that way. I don't know. Uh, it's usually the tank that leaks through corrosion. So, I don't know how many years you'd buy by by taking an existing water heater and bolting on a, a heat pump. Um, so, yes, um, I guess someone already answered this question. Solar panels are a much better investment than solar thermal. Uh, I. I guess you have to get approval of the rebate before you start the work. That kind of makes sense. Oh, okay, I haven't been reading the questions. Sorry. Uh, if anyone wants to repose a question, that's that's what I have. Peter, do you have anything to add? No, not on this front. Um, I just want to reiterate what Saul Griffith says, and you know we're we're running out of time, and uh, any opportunity you have to change an appliance, if you know your stove fails or your water heater fails, do not replace it with a uh, uh, with a fossil fuel burning device. It's it's just uh, it's going to kill the planet, um, and you know, when you do the heat pump water here, you might have to run that circuit. So plan in advance to get the circuit run so that you're not out of hot water for a week or so. There's another question in the chat, Suds, that says, uh, okay. will I run out of hot water? With my gas heater, there's always enough. Uh, I, th I would imagine that if you uh, have a tank water, gas water heater, and you have a tank, um, a tank uh, heat pump water heater, you have the same capacity of hot water. So um, uh, the you run out about the same. But the recovery time of the gas water heater to get hot water again is much quicker than a heat pump water heater. So if you end up in a situation where you're starting to run out of uh, hot water, I would recommend either getting a bigger heat pump water heater tank or superheating it with a mixing valve. So. Um, So I know it's it's kind of like range anxiety on electric cars. You know, I have a Ford Focus electric. It's got 80 miles of range. My wife is always concerned about range anxiety, running out of power, but I've never run out of power in that car. And if I do have to go further, I just borrow her Prius. But for most of what I do, people are buying like 300, 400 mile range cars just in the chance, because they're just nervous about running out. But the average person only drives 25, 30 miles a day. So my Ford Focus is fine for me. And um, if you're, like I said, if you do start running out of, of hot water in your, in your uh, heat pump water heat, I just crank up the temperature, but make sure you have a mixing valve. Someone is asking if you know when the 120 volt models will come and if you know anything about the brands 
Yeah, I had heard, I I had heard, I had heard that they were going to come out Q1 of this year, but I looked and looked on the internet and I couldn't find any, so they've been delayed. So certainly by the end of the year they'll be out, but um, I have not been able to find one that I could buy right now. So. Um, Any other questions? Yeah, there might be calculators. In fact, we Actera should probably create a calculator for how many people in the household, how long the showers are, and whether. Um, whether uh, you would run out of wa water and how to size the tanks. I'm sure someone has a calculator for sizing tanks. I haven't seen one. Um, so uh, the noise from a heat pump water heater in, in a garage that's directly below one's bedroom. Like I said, that the noise of the heat pump water heater is about the same as a gentle rainfall. So I would imagine that you wouldn't hear it uh, in the bedroom above the garage. Um, I don't think that it would be a problem. Um, it's the same. It's the same noise as a conversation, um, uh, not a loud conversation. So I can't imagine that you would hear it in the bedroom above. It depends on whether there's an insulation in that space between the garage and the bedroom. Um, so uh, how big is the heat pump water heater relative to the gas water heater? It is a little bit taller because you have the tank and then you have uh, the, the heat pump above it. Let me see if I can find the dimensions of this ream. Uh, I don't see it right here. Um, I can find out. You can look it up in the specs for the for the water heaters, but it is taller because it has that uh, heat pump, the condenser above. Um, I can certainly share the slides. Um, if you have an ADU, is it okay to install one in the 500 square foot garage slash ADU? Um, let's see, the dimensions that I had were like a 100 square foot. So it's certainly bigger than the 100 square foot, but if it's a living space that somebody's gonna be in, it might get kind of cool in that room unless you vent it to the outside. Uh, and so when you have one, I don't know if they have one that will, you can lie on its side. Um, if you have a water heater in a crawl space. Um, I, I think a crawl space would be an ideal place for a heat pump water heater. The only thing is you need to be able to get at um, being able to replace the filter once a year. So you might have some dust in that crawl space. So you might have to replace the filter maybe even more than once a year. But I've only replaced my, not even replaced, you just take it out and you rinse it off. You don't, and uh, I, I do that once a year. Um, yeah, sorry, I don't have, I don't have uh, the dimensions of the, the water heater. Uh, but like I said, um, you know, you can go with a, uh, if you, even if, like I said, you don't wanna go with a fossil fuel device. 
So you, you either want to commit to a larger tank uh, heat pump water heater, or uh, you want to superheat it. But I just, to all of the people watching this, you just can't in good conscience buy a fossil fuel device. There are no vapors or gases to be concerned um, if you're in the garage or ADU. Um, the, the, the refrigerant that they use is a non-toxic refrigerant. So if you did have a refrigerant leak, um, but if you had a if you had a gas water heater in your ADU, I'd be way more concerned about carbon monoxide or nitrous oxides from the combustion of gas. Um, you don't need to enclose the heat pump in a closet in the garage ADU. It could just be like your regular uh, um, water heater that you have there. Oh, good. I'm glad that someone has a sizing calculator for water heaters. So um, it's posted here in the chat on plumbingtoday.biz. Oh yeah, you're right. They do have to be upright because the hot water rises. Exactly. There is a whole gradient of heat in the water heater. So they have to be upright. All right, we're nearing seven o'clock. So I wanna say thank you to everyone who attended this workshop. We have another one coming up in the month of April for solar rooftops. This is part of the Ectera's Green at Home workshop. Um, thanks to our sponsor again, Peninsula Clean Energy. And I just wanna say thank you again for attending and everyone have a good night. We will send out the slides for, for people who are asking. So thank you again and enjoy your Wednesday night, guys.